you've got this construction of this diagram. Um, this diagram is one of hundreds of diagrams that prove uh, this identity we're going to end up with once we finish the last question. <coughs> Do you remember? We've talked in Algebra and Trig about expressions, equations, and identities. Just think about those last two. Do you remember what's the difference between an equation and an identity? Yeah, an identity is always true. Okay, identities are true for all values of whatever protein rules are in there, right? So for example, uh, just to come back to this, here is an equation, and it's only true for one value of x, right? But uh, here, is an identity. It's true for all values of x that you can supply. Does that make sense? Cool. So what we're going to do is we're going to come up with an identity for what this is equal to. You've been working with trig functions for a little while, but what happens when you put not one, but two angles inside the angle, the argument up there? So let's have a look at this. Okay. Now, uh, don't worry too much about all of this stuff here. All it's doing is it's just restating what's in the diagram. <coughs> all of the, well, there's only one length that's been given to you. That one over there. So if you like, you could picture this on a gigantic unit circle if you want to, but you don't have to worry about that. Uh, a whole bunch of perpendicular lines down here, but most of them I've already indicated on the diagram. Here's uh, what you're actually being asked to do in order to um, actually prove this identity. All of the angles in this diagram, you can get them in terms of these two angles down here. And these angles can be anything you like. 30, 45, 78, whatever you want. That's why I've, I've given them pro numerals, because they can take on any value. All the angles in there we can find in terms of those two. And all of the distances on the diagram, you can find in terms of trig functions of those angles. Let me try and explain what I mean by way of example. Distance PQ. That's the first one we have to find. So first, just have a look at your diagram and tell me where PQ is. Where is it? Can you describe it to me? Use some words. Have a look. Over there, top right. Yeah, do you see it? Okay. So I'm just going to label it like that. Now, if that's the length I'm after, can you see, and you may like to do this yourself if you've got another colour there, this uh, length, PQ, it exists inside this right angle triangle. Do you see that? Yeah. Can you see that one I've highlighted there in blue? And you can see the right angle over there in the bottom right hand corner. Okay. Since it's a right angle triangle, I can use all of the stuff I know from right angle triangle trig. Right? No sine rule, no <laughs> cosine rule required. So have a look. This is what I'm after over here. And I know what this angle in the corner is. So, have a look. How could I work out the length of that sign with all the information that I've got? Any suggestions? Oh, thanks, Mr. Townsend, for sending me the email. Uh, have a look. This is the side I'm after. This is the side I know. So, what piece of information links those? Sine beta. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sine of beta down here is going to be opposite the one I want on hypotenuse. Do you agree? So maybe here on the side, you've got enough space on that piece of paper to write this, by the way. Um, I would write in triangle OPQ. By the way, I'm going to encourage you, whenever you're doing anything involving <coughs> sine rule, cosine rule, uh, area of triangle, or just your regular trig ratios, please name the triangle you're talking about. Oh yeah, they haven't done daylight savings, so that was the end of roll call, everyone. Um, You've got a lot of triangles flying around, so please name the triangles you're talking about so that, as the marker, I can know that you know what you're talking about. The suggestion was using sine. Sine of beta. It's going to be opposite on hypotenuse. Opposite is PQ. And the length of the hypotenuse in this case is? One. So therefore, if you just have a look at that equation there, I can say PQ is equal to sine beta. That's it. So in fact, that's what I'm going to write over here. Sine beta. Are you following? Is that okay? So this is what I mean by that length over there is sine beta. Okay, have a look at the next one. OQ. Can you, without my help, have a look at where OQ is and what information... Don't, don't shout it out. Just have a look. What would you write down to work out the length of OQ? I'll give you 30 seconds. 
go into a reader like that? Yeah, yeah. So in in triangle OPQ, say one. Cos beta equals OQ on one. Fantastic. So you've got this time, this length down here, same triangle, but it's adjacent on hypotenuse. It's going to be most useful, right? So being that OQ on one is just OQ, I can say that uh, this length here is now cos beta. Do you see what I'm doing? So I'm now constructing what are all the lengths in here in terms of the angles and trig functions of those angles. Okay. Distance AQ. AQ. Where is that? Now, I, this is the last one I'm going to hold your hand to work out, and then I think you can do the rest. Here's AQ over here. Do you see it? <coughs> okay. Now, this is another right angle triangle. You know what this angle in the corner is. It's alpha. Okay. So, what's the name of the triangle that length AQ is in? Can you name it for me? In triangle OAQ. Right? Okay, so which trig function will I use that's the most, trig ratio rather, that's the most useful to me? It's going to be sine again, because look, here's alpha, and that guy's all the way on the opposite side. So I can say sine alpha. Now, sine alpha will be opposite on hypotenuse. That's AQ on what? Yeah, this side that I just found out. Does that make sense? It's not one. Uh, that's not the triangle I'm in. I'm in this triangle down here. <coughs> So all you have to do, if you have a look over there on the right hand side, is to make AQ the subject, I just have to multiply through by cos beta, which should give you this. I know it's a bit of a mouthful, but that's what the trigonometry tells me. Does that make sense? Yeah. So that was parts one through three. Can you do parts four through six? Same kind of ideas. Uh, again, set it out just like I have up here on the right hand side. And if you think you have an answer, call me over. BPQ, firstly, where is it? Where is it? It's right there at that top. It's that little sharp angle over there. Okay. So, admittedly, like there's a lot of lines flying around. One of the hardest things about most geometry questions is sifting out the unimportant information from the important information that you can use. Okay. So here, I want to help you see. Notice how I've got all of these parallel and perpendicular lines, okay? So for instance, see OA, this horizontal line down the bottom, OA? Do you notice that it's parallel to RQ? That horizontal line sort of there in the middle, okay? Now if it's parallel, that means that this angle alpha down here in the corner is also equal to, there's another, actually there's a, there's a few different alphas there that you can see, right? Um, I want to get as close as I can to this angle up here that you are telling me I need, right? That one on the top. Yeah. So what's the most direct way I can find an alpha that's close to that angle in that triangle? Yeah, suggestion. Like the little, uh, the middle. It's got a name. It's got a name. Can you tell me the name? Oh, RQC. RQC. Do you see that RQC is also alpha? What's the reason, by the way? Alternate angles on parallel lines. Not that I need you to state that, but just so you can see what's going on. Right? Uh, can you see, I'll, I'll erase this in a minute, but do you see the Z? See it there? Okay. So you've got the alternate angles, that's good. Now, this is positive because <coughs> now I'm in this triangle. That's a start. Hmm. Well, that's alpha. It's adjacent to this other angle in here, and together they are 90 degrees. They're complementary. So what does that make the other angle? 90 minus alpha, right? 90 degrees minus alpha degrees. But now look, look, have a look in triangle PQR now, PQR, do you see? If that's 90 minus alpha over there, this is right angle. So therefore, it's got to be alpha degrees to get the angles on the triangle. Does that make sense? Okay. So now I can use that to work out the rest of the parts. I think if I recall, the next question is PR. Is that the distance you're trying to find? PR. <coughs> So if this is the length I'm after, now I know some angles in this triangle, and I also know another length. So if I know that this is alpha up here in the corner, what is the ratio that connects the green side, which I want to find, with the blue side that I already know? It's going to be cos, isn't it? Can you see that's adjacent on hypotenuse? Look at where the right angle is. Yeah. So I'm going to say, 
is this spot up here. And triangle PQR, as is suggested, cos alpha is equal to adjacent, that's the one you need, over hypotenuse, which is the one you know. So far, so good. All right. So I can make PR the subject fairly easily. That's going to become by multiplying through by sine beta. So therefore, this is cos alpha sine beta. Are you okay with that? You see how I've got that, that green vertical there? Okay, I'm almost there. The final question is, so find sine of, as the title suggests, alpha plus beta. Now, where is alpha plus beta? Uh, it's your two that would find the red and the blue. Yeah, it's the red and the blue together, right? So alpha plus beta is those two angles sitting next to each other, which is exactly what you've got down here. So I'm just going to label that. Let's choose my last color now. That guy there is alpha plus beta, yeah? So the right angle triangle that this angle is in, it has a name. What's it called? P O B, right? P here. O and B. Okay. So that's the triangle I'm in. So what is sine of alpha plus beta in this triangle? What does it give you? Which length is it? It's going to be um, B, BP, right? BP. Sine of alpha plus beta is opposite, that's this guy, on hypotenuse, which is 1. So all I really need is BP, but you can see what BP is, can't you, right? You've got cos alpha sine beta here, and because it's a nicely done diagram and you can see all these right angles, this sine alpha cos beta is the same length over here. Does that make sense? So this whole length you're after BP is this green plus this red. Are you okay with that? So let's write that as a summary right down the bottom. I've got it already here. Sine of alpha <coughs> plus beta. Uh, unlike many people say, oh, I'll just get rid of the brackets. That must be sine alpha plus sine beta. Well, it's not too hard to work out if you just crunch some numbers, like say, put in some numbers that you know, like say 30 and 30. Sine, what's 30 plus 30? Well, if this were true, then what would it equal? Sine 30 plus sine 30? What is sine 30 plus sine 30? That's a half plus a half, which is one. one. But I'm pretty sure sine 60 is not one, right? So this, this doesn't work. That's not what it's equal to. In fact, it's equal to what we just proved. Let me write it down and get this projector out of my way, because I need more space. It is, in fact, equal to sine alpha cos beta plus cos alpha sine <coughs> beta. Uh, or you can substitute for those alphas and betas anything you liked, x's, thetas, a's, b's, because that's the lovely thing about an identity. You can put anything you like in there and it works. Okay.